SLR randomized prospective study. And in this study, we challenged the standard of care, which is PET guided escalated BACOP, with a new regimen. The new regimen is the Brentuximab Bedotin modified escalated BACOP regimen. So we, we omitted bleomycin from the regimen. We replaced vincristin with Brentuximab Bedotin. We replaced prednisone over two weeks with dexamethasone of only four days. And most importantly, we replaced procarbazin by dark carbazine. So it's a completely new regimen. We have tested it in a phase two a couple of years ago. And this it seemed to be very safe. It seemed to be active, but you never know from phase two. That's why we challenge now the standard of care with this new BRICAD regimen. We enrolled 1,500 patients into that trial. It was a globally recruiting trial from in Europe, Western Europe, but also in Australia, New Zealand, and so forth. So many, many countries, 233 sites all over the world. And we enrolled these 1,500 patients within four years. The trial has a primary endpoint, which is um, comprised or is, is built upon two different parts. So the first part is tolerability. So this new regimen should be better tolerated than the escalated vehicle because we have problems with tolerability of escalated vehicle. The second part, obviously, it should be equally effective. It should be not inferior. So this is the first analysis, analysis and this first analysis focuses on the treatment-related morbidity endpoint. So in brief, the question is, if, is, if a BRICAD is better tolerated than BACOP. And this was defined as a TRMB endpoint, which includes all different kinds of heme tox, like anemia, or thrombocytopenia, and so forth, infections, but also organ tox grade three or four. And what we found in this trial is that the BRICA regimen is statistically highly significant superior to escalated PECOP in terms of TRMB. So this means there's much less toxicity. And this is highly significant and at a very high level. Um, but this is numbers and this is not an established endpoint. So what does it mean for the patients in, in practical terms? And what we found is that, for example, patients with transfusions for red, bl red blood cells, is usually it's 50% in this trial, so 53% with escalated BACOP, came down to 30%. Uh, same is true for um, platelet transfusions, what happened from 34% to 17%. Uh, looking at, for example, neuropathy, we have very rare incidents uh, or very rare cases of severe neuropathy. It basically, does not exist with our regimens. But grade two, which is usually not considered severe, is severe for the patients. The, the, this is disabling for daily activities, and usually it's not reported. reported. And we have with the escalated BACOP regimen 14% of patients with this kind of neuropathy, but only six with the BRICAD regimen, so it's also halfened. So wherever you look at it, it's much less toxicity. And importantly, most importantly for these younger patients, we also looked at gonadal damage as determined by FSH levels. And we found for both men and women that the FSH levels one year after treatment are within the normal range in contrast to escalated vehicle where we know that this causes gonadal damage and FSH goes up. That's what you expect to see, we saw it in the trial. But they remain within the normal uh, level for the BRICAD regimen, so it's not gonadal toxic any longer. Um, looking at efficacy, which is not the primary goal of this analysis, right? We can just look at the entire study cohort. Uh, we, this is no chance to look at the two treatment groups. But for the entire cohort, we have a PFS at three years of 94%, which is obviously much higher than in any other trial. And it's even a little bit higher than, our, than in our previous trials, like HD18 or HD15. So again, a bit higher. And overall survival, fortunately for our patients, is 99% in either arm, so extremely high, with a median follow-up of close to three years. So, although I can't say it's better than BACOP, I don't know yet, we will know next year. What I can say for sure is that it's much better tolerated, and for the entire trial, we had an overall survival and progression for survival level we have never reached before, which suggests that the new regimen also is a bit more active, but we don't know, and it's not the aim of this analysis. Overall, I think this is good news for our patients. And it's a very, so far, a very successful trial. We're glad to share the data here.